Fleischer, and Edie Tarbucks. Bill Evans with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. Good afternoon, I'm Edie Tarbox. And I'm Tim Fleischer. Welcome to Eyewitness News at Noon. A lesson in violence, a shooting on campus at Rutgers University. The victim, a female student, is in satisfactory condition. It occurred overnight at the Newell Apartments on campus in New Brunswick. And four suspects are in custody. David Ushery now has the latest live from the campus. David. And Tim, we are in the student center where officials are about to hold a news conference to shed some more light on last night's shooting. There were some initial reports that robbery may have been involved in this, but some witnesses told the campus newspaper they believe the suspect shot the girl for no reason. Police and witnesses say 20-year-old sophomore Rachel West was walking near Newell Apartments on the Cook campus around 8 o'clock when three men called out to her and said, come over here. She said, do I know you? She didn't recognize them and kept walking. The suspects then shot at her one bullet skipping near her feet, another entering her back and lodging near her shoulder blade. Russell Heimovitz says he was there. I heard, like, uh, I thought it was, you know, because it's the leftover from Halloween, maybe like a little, like a pretty loud blast. And um, so I thought maybe it was just a Halloween prank. And then uh, I heard another one. I looked out the window and I saw someone on the floor and I said, oh my God, I think something just happened. And then like, I just, uh, I didn't know what was going on. And I said, I don't know if it was like a prank or a joke to somebody, someone maybe got like tripped. And the next thing I know, someone, I heard some screaming, and it was pretty scary. Kind of shook me up, because I've been going to school here for four years now, and for there's always been rapes and stuff, and that's always been scary with lighting. But when you hear that somebody just gets shot just to be shot, and there's a female, she's by herself, makes you wonder, should you even travel by, by yourself or alone? And since I'm a woman, and sometimes, you know, I'm forced to walk by myself, it doesn't make me feel very safe. Police arrested three suspects last night and a fourth this morning. An adult, Ronald Marlin, 18 years old, from New Brunswick, charged with one count each of attempted murder, robbery, aggravated assault, possession of a firearm. In addition, two juveniles, 16 years old and a fourth, a 14-year-old, also arrested. Police not releasing their names. The victim in satisfactory condition at Robert Wood Johnson University. That's the latest. We'll obviously have more for you later on on Eyewitness News. For now, I'm live in New Brunswick at the Rutgers campus. David Ushery, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. A suspect in an alleged rape is in custody in the Bronx at this hour. Police say the, the alleged victim acted quickly, flagging down a patrol car and then going after the man she says attacked her in the hallway of an apartment building. Bertha Coombs joins us live from the Bronx with details. Bertha? Edie, we are at the 46th precinct. This is the precinct that handled that arrest. Often when there is a sexual assault, the tough part for officials is to try to track down the suspect. But in this case, the critical difference was apparently the quick thinking and quick action on the part of the alleged victim. 34-year-old William McCray is in custody this morning after police officers from the 46th precinct arrested him with the help of a woman who claimed she'd been sexually assaulted. The 23-year-old woman told police McCray grabbed her at knife point while she was on her way to the subway. She says he then dragged her into this Morris Avenue building and attacked her under the stairs. The building super says he didn't notice there, there was anything unusual this morning except that the glass in the door was broken. And just find out that there was a problem in there. But everything was fine. Does it make you angry that something like that might yeah. have happened there? Make me angry, yeah. Because we, I mean, here, we're living together. If anybody could hear the noise, they should come to the door. Police say after the assault, the young woman managed to flag down some police officers and rode with them in the squad car looking for her alleged attacker. They found him on the Grand Concourse. They'd spotted him about three blocks away from the alleged attack just a few minutes after it happened. But police then had to chase him on foot before catching up with him and charging him with rape, kidnapping, and burglary. McCray was also charged with possession of a weapon. Police recovered a knife when they arrested him. We are live in the Bronx. I'm Bertha Coombs, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. One of the suspects in the plot to blow up New York City landmarks may have turned state's witness. Abdel Mohammed Haggad reportedly is helping government prosecutors. The defection could be a major victory, helping prosecutors bolster its case. Investigators say Haggad is a confidant of Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman. Well, that blind Egyptian cleric is also accused of conspiracy, allegedly playing a leading role in the plot to launch a war of urban terrorism. Today, Sheikh Abdel Rahman and 14 co-defendants are scheduled to have a pretrial hearing in federal court. 
Two days ago, under heavy guard, the Sheikh was moved to the Metropolitan Correction Center in Lower Manhattan at his attorney's request. Many people outside Los Angeles are moving, but it is fire chasing them from home. The arson investigation into those wildfires has now turned into a homicide investigation as well. That's because one of two people seriously burned. British screenwriter Duncan Gibbons has died. Gibbons suffered burns over 90% of his body when he returned to his home Tuesday trying to save a cat. The L.A. Fire Department says the fires in the Malibu area are 60% contained today, but the Santa Ana winds, which have died down, can be tricky. Jim Dolan has the latest from Los Angeles. The advance of the fires over the hills near Malibu was starting to slow down overnight, a result more of a change in the weather than any great success by the army of firefighters deployed here. But that good news was little solace to the hundreds of families chased from their homes by the flames. We were running around trying to grab things, and we realized we left a lot of things that uh, we could have grabbed very quickly, but now that's all in hindsight. My kids are homeless. And... Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do right now. Despite the massive amount of manpower being used to battle these fires, there is still more fire than firefighter. We're just a short distance from Pepperdine, a large Catholic university near Malibu, and there is nobody battling the fire you see at the bottom of the hill below me. Not a single firefighter. It's just not a priority yet. And star power, an important currency in Southern California, was little help when the wind-fed flames marched over the hills. Actor Sean Penn's home was a pile of smoldering ash yesterday morning, and Ally McGraw's was half a shell. Other stars, though, were more lucky. We got lucky, and Sean didn't, so it's too bad. Not know like this and then see it, it's unbelievable. The saddest part of all this, of course, is that this fire was started by an arsonist who has now left 200 families homeless. Anybody that gets their jollies in this way is not normal. I think we are entitled to lock them up, probably for life, but certainly until they are really no longer a threat, if ever. The state has offered a $250,000 reward for the capture of that arsonist. We are back live now uh, at the uh, headquarters, the uh, command center near Pepperdine University. You see these trucks behind me. There are hundreds of them, literally thousands of firefighters here. Uh, waiting to get back to work if it's necessary. The Malibu fire is now reported to be 70% out, and they expect it to be about 100% out by about 7 o'clock this evening, New York time. The problem with that is the Santa Ana winds, which have fanned the flames of this fire from the beginning, are also expected to kick up later this afternoon. Reporting live from Pepperdine University, Jim Dolan, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. The fiery governor's race in New Jersey has been extinguished, but money remains a big issue. Governor-elect Christine Todd Whitman is keeping her pledge to cut income taxes, but her state house colleagues are hedging. Ms. Whitman says that her top priorities are lowering taxes and creating jobs, but State Senate President Donald DeFrancesco says that the plan doesn't have a rubber stamp. Ms. Whitman also had a telephone conversation with Governor Florio, a talk that she described as gracious. For the most part, Governor Florio stayed out of the limelight yesterday, preferring to spend the day quietly with family and friends. He received a number of sympathetic telephone calls, including one from President Clinton. Governor Florio was in the executive mansion last night in Princeton and will meet the press this afternoon for an election postmortem. A new treatment can help clear up cosmetic problems that affect many adults. When we come back, we'll tell you how you can get rid of varicose veins. Plus, a close call for passengers on board a China Airlines jumbo jet as it skids off a runway in Hong Kong. And a bit later, some elephants put new meaning into pounding the pavement. We'll explain. Stay with me. I... A new treatment may bring hope and possibly a cure to people with bladder cancer. A report published by the New England Journal of Medicine indicates that a combination of surgery, radiation, and medication could help some patients avoid complete removal of a cancerous bladder. But the doctors warn that better treatment is still needed. An estimated 52,000 Americans will be diagnosed with bladder cancer this year, and 10,000 patients will die from it. Varicose veins are not really a health threat, but the people who have this inherited condition feel that varicose veins are unattractive. Well, now treating them is nearly as simple as saying, vein, vein, go away. Dr. Jay Adlersberg explains how that works. 
pretty shoes can make nice legs look even better. And Helen Jonas has been told that she has nice legs, but she's bothered by one thing. When I cross my legs and look down, I see little purple lines as if it were a map, and I don't like it. Helen has varicosities, little varicose veins that are very evident in her leg. So every few years, Helen visits her dermatologist and has them treated. interested in the right leg. The treatment is called sclerotherapy, injections of a harmless saline or salt solution directly into the tiny veins. Dr. Jean Bodian, who teaches other doctors the technique, says the solution irritates the vein walls and causes them to collapse. Within three to six weeks, the veins will completely and permanently disappear. In some patients, however, the problem may recur within a few years. You can get new veins adjacent to these and around them and there's no way to prevent that that we know of just yet. The number of injections required depends on how severe the vein problem is. This woman had her legs injected over a 14-month period, but after the therapy, this is what they looked like. There are different solutions that doctors can use for these injections, and they're all relatively safe and effective. But if the vein that is swelling is a larger one, then a leaky valve in the vein may be the problem, and surgery may be the answer. Generally speaking, the larger the vein, the more likely it is, you know, that it is necessary to do surgery. This is the whole uh, thing. But it's surgery that can be done on an outpatient basis now. This patient came in at 7 in the morning and was out by 3 in the afternoon. The leaky valve is at a main intersection near the groin, so the surgery involves a small incision, and the vein is tied off so that blood will not pool and cause the veins below to swell. Many patients eventually have to turn to surgery according to Dr. Nabatov. Eventually they realize themselves you know, that they have to tie off the leak on the top. But the injections are very good if you don't have the uh, major valvular leak. This is Dr. Jay Adlersberg, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. There were only minor injuries in a close call for a China Airlines 747 as it landed at Hong Kong's airport this morning. That plane attempting to land in heavy rain and 50 mile an hour winds skidded off the runway into Hong Kong's harbor. It ended up in shallow water which allowed rescue workers to form a human chain to bring passengers to safety. 296 people were on board and only 22 were injured. Well, extremely lucky. Coming up today, sunny skies are about to cloud over. Meteorologist Bill Evans has details in his AccuWeather forecast. Plus, New Yorkers had a close encounter with some large animals this morning. We'll tell you why these elephants were out for a bit of a stroll today. And a bit later on, Mariah Carey hits the road for the first time in her career. Stay with us. And you'll Your daughter comes home from school and tells you... They called her... And I was appalled. Your son comes home from school and tells you... They told me... He was emotionally becoming a basket case. Can you hold the school liable? When innocent playground passes cross the line, your child has rights. Learn how you can protect those rights. Watch a special report, the ABCs of school sexual harassment, today on Eyewitness News at 5, right here on Channel 7. Here on the set, when the lights come up and the camera starts to roll, even one flake of dandruff can ruin it all. That's why I use Head & Shoulders. Come into Food Town and try Head & Shoulders yourself. You know, it's even better than it was just a couple of years ago. Today's Head & Shoulders gets to 10 times more of the places dandruff starts. Put it to the test. Prove it to yourself. Head & Shoulders and Head & Shoulders 2-in-1. Now at Food Town. Because great hair can't have flakes. Well, they were pounding the pavement on all fours at Lincoln Center this morning, and they certainly weren't going to the Philharmonic. These proud pachyderms are on their way to the Big, Big Apple Circus, now appearing in Dom Roche Park, in that section of the Lincoln Center. They'll be joining acrobats and trapeze artists who will be flying high with the greatest of ease, no doubt, until January 9th. This year's theme is Carnival in Venice, and even some of the clowns are from Italy. If you haven't been to the Big Apple Circus, you haven't been to a circus. I'm so, I, it's I, terrific. I, I, didn't, I, I apologize. I didn't notice the video. Was that our bosses going to lunch? Oh, <laughs> Bill? You're fired! <laughs> Not that... Uh, 
They have a You're sense of humor. You're standing alone on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, it is a good day to take a walk. Whether you're a pachyderm or unemployed. As a matter of fact, here's how things look outside on the west side. It's been a morning where it's been kind of cool and it's been kind of chilly, but now we're seeing things warm up and there's been lots of sunshine today and it will be a very nice afternoon. Here's how things look this hour. We have skies with sunshine. It's very nice. 51 degrees outside, a dry humidity at 51%. The barometer has been falling. It's falling now because the cold front is approaching and the high pressure that brought us this gorgeous weather this morning and through the day today is working its way out into the Atlantic. And at the same time, it gives us southwest winds at 6, which should probably warm us up today to what will be near a 60-degree reading, no rain in the last 24 hours. Satellite pictures, well, let's get a, get a good look, and you'll see that the cold front that was in the area has just now pushed its way out into the Atlantic and will continue to do so over the next 24-hour period. And the area of cloudiness that's here in the Great Lakes, that's another cold front that is spreading eastward this hour. And that cold front is really going to pack quite a punch that will be coming in later tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. So we'll see clouds increasing today and tonight. And it'll be a mild day tomorrow because the cold air is really lagging back here across the northern Rockies and the northern plains. Gusty winds have been coming in with this front across the northern Rockies. 60, 70 mile per hour winds have been reported across Montana, Wyoming, and also Colorado now moving into the northern plains. And there's a pretty fair amount of showers across the Great Lakes with this next cold front that is coming across. This is snow all across the Black Hills through North Dakota, South Dakota, through uh, central and northern sections of Minnesota. There's also snow right around Milwaukee changing over terrain in Chicago. Down south, there's a lot of moisture coming in with the remnants of that front and that's also creating some scattered showers there. For this afternoon, we'll see a nice afternoon with mild conditions. It'll be sunny and mild. 56 will be the high. Off to the west, though, is the front that I was telling you about. That cold front will keep moving eastward and increase our clouds tonight, giving us a cloudy evening. So then tomorrow, we'll have a cloudy day, big rain expected. It'll be mild with the first front that comes through, but there'll be a lot of rain, probably an inch to an inch and a half. The second cold front that's back across the Great Lakes tomorrow evening sweeps down across. Saturday and Sunday will be very chilly. And that cold front will produce a fair amount of snow across the Great Lakes all the way back into the Rockies where the ski slopes are going to be opening this weekend. Here's your accurate forecast for this afternoon. It's a great day to take your pachyderm for a walk. It'll be sunny and mild with a high of 56. Tonight will be mostly cloudy with a low of 48. And then tomorrow, well, you can clean out the trunk or something while you're in the house because it'll be raining all day long with maybe even a thunderstorm on Friday. Saturday and Sunday will be much cooler. It'll be very windy on Saturday and Sunday. And the weekend, however, we'll see a lot of sunshine. Things will warm back up a little more on Monday and Tuesday. Make it a good day, okay? You too. Thanks, Bill. All right. Manhattan's Upper West Side has a new mecca for people who want to shop till they drop. Filene's Basement is the latest discount clothing chain to invade New York with bags of bargains on big name fashions. Crowds of Pennywise shoppers all but beat the doors down as Filene's Basement officially opened to the public today. And a lucky early bird won a $500 shopping spree certificate. Well, she is known for her extravagant taste in clothes, but now everyone wants to know why Princess Di left a recent appearance in tears. Plus, chili is the perfect way to warm up a cold night. Mr. Food has a recipe that won't take you all night to prepare. Stay with us. Huffman Coos Storewide Veterans Day sale is on right now. Savings of 20 to 50 percent. Plus, no payments and no interest for six months. Huffman Coos, the Northeast Furniture Leader. This is air traffic control. Welcome to New York. Now just take a right at the giant tree and come on in for a landing at Radio City Music Hall. Last year, more than one million people came to see America's favorite holiday tradition, the Radio City Christmas Spectacular, starring the world-famous Rockettes. Now come see our 93 edition with a magical new sleigh ride of a lifetime and make it your best Christmas, too. Call 212-307-1000. When it comes to refinancing your mortgage, it's important to do business with a lender you can depend on. With 115 local offices servicing almost $4 billion in loans, you probably know the Money Store is one of America's leading home equity lenders. But there's more. The Money Store is also the largest guaranteed lender to small businesses, and their student loan company is a leading lender to college students. So call the lender you can depend on, the Money Store. 1-800-LOAN-YES. The Money Store, where America goes for money. Buy tickets now for Cats. Call Telecharge 239-6200. Cats, the world's most exciting musical, is at the Winter Garden Theater. The Living Well Lady Fitness Centers. Join today for only $10 down and $10 per month. Join now. Call 1-800-LIVE-WELL. L-I-V-W-E-L-L. -L. 
Tonight, Eyewitness News takes you into a world where cruelty reigns. The animals have been trained to fight to the death. And greed is king. The average that one could make on a night could be in the thousands. Where animal is pitted against animal. It's torn apart by another bird. For fun and profit. There's a lot of money in it. And it's happening right in our own backyard. Meet the people waging a war to stop the underground world of cockfighting. A special report tonight at 11 on Eyewitness News, right here on Channel 7. British royalty tops our people in the news today. England's press wants to know why Princess Diana pulled out of a public engagement in tears recently. The latest news from Buckingham Palace indicated she had a migraine headache, but reportedly a member of her family says she's suffering from a recurring eating disorder known as bulimia. Woody Allen has been unanimously turned down in his demand to have a Connecticut state prosecutor disciplined. Last September, that prosecutor said that there was probable cause to believe that Allen sexually abused his daughter, Dylan. But the prosecutor said he would not bring the case to trial. Allen complained that the prosecutor was acting as judge and jury, but a state panel decided there was not an ethics violation. And singing sensation Mariah Carey hits the road for the first time in her career. Her latest hit, Hero, is her seventh single to climb to number one on Billboard's Hot 100. And the sorrow that you know. Time now to see what's coming up for Eyewitness News at 5 o'clock. And for that, we go up to the newsroom. And today, a surprising development in the World Trade Center bombing trial. We'll have full details coming up at 5 o'clock. Also, our special report, child sexual harassment. The desperate step one little boy takes after his pleas for help are ignored by school officials. And a sneak peek at a new comedy that packs a knockout punch. It stars boxing great George Foreman, and we'll talk to him about his new role. All that and much more when you join us today at 5. Hope to see you then. Now back to the studio. Thanks, Greg. With the temperatures expected to dip this weekend, you might have a craving for chili. Mr. Food has a recipe. No doubt, autumn is chili time. No, not chili, burr. The chili we love, but don't always make because we think it takes too long. Well, with a couple of little secrets, we can fix that. The first secret is our very own seasoning mixture. Using any brands at all, we mix together three tablespoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of cumin, one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, three quarters of a teaspoon of oregano, and a half teaspoon of ground red pepper. Now we sprinkle two teaspoons of that over our second secret, a pound of cubed steak that we've cut into one inch pieces. And we brown that along with a chopped onion in a large skillet and a couple teaspoons of oil. Then we add a large can of tomatoes, juice and all, a box of frozen kernel corn, another two and a half teaspoons of our seasoning mix, and a half teaspoon of salt. We let it come to a boil, we turn down the heat, and let it simmer that way, uncovered about 20 minutes. Done! Chili in less than 30 minutes from start to finish, including the possibility of wanting to add some of your own extras if you want. And if you'd like the recipe, just send a self-addressed stamped envelope marked 30 Minute Chili to me, Mr. Food, right here at the station. And we'll get it back to you for letting us have full tasting chili, not only fast, but easy too. And you know, with the extra mix, next time even faster and easier. Ooh, it's so good. And that's our news for now. I'm Edie Tarbox for Bill Evans and Tim Fleischer and the rest of the Eyewitness News team. Thanks for joining us.